This is Audible. I wouldn't mind so much if it wasn't for all the nanty narking singing. It's a hymn of ancient praise to Tatty Bogle. Oh, heaven. I'd visited Baker's End often enough that year to know when there was another supernatural adventure in the offing. Late summer was a curious time. The villagers were preparing for their harvest festival. But this wasn't just a case of a few tins of spaghetti hoops and some jars of homemade jam. Oh, it's so hot. It's nearly eleven o'clock at night and it's stifling. You should try being furry like me, Mrs. Frimbley. It's no joke. My new skimble shanks is sticking to me. Well, you could go back to dressing like a sensible human being. Never, never, never. I get embarrassed having to explain you to all and sundry. If I changed back, I'd Kruger spoof all my marvellous powers. Who's knocking at this strange hour? I'll scumble them off. Unga meow. You'll do no such thing. The housekeeper was surprised to find two children waiting on the doorstep. Can I help you? This place is Baker's End, isn't it? You shouldn't be out knocking on doors as late as this. Is this the home of Tom Baker, the gigantic cat? The man who says he's the king of cats. I don't see what that's got to do with you. And are you Mrs. Frimbley, his housekeeper? What if I am? There are things your master doesn't know about you. What are they bubbling on about, Mrs. Frimbley? Um, nothing. I'm, I'm just telling them to go away. You can shoo us off. You can push us away with a flea in our ear. But you'll get what's coming to you. When Tatty Bogle returns, when he comes home to Happenstall, Everyone under this roof is doomed. I'm not listening to another word of this. Go on. <laughs> Scram! <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. Well, whatever's the matter? You look like you've had a fright. Those children at the door. Oh, what's so scary about children? There aren't any children in happenstance, Susie. Then who or, or what were they? Something even nastier. Those were sticky and uncomfortable days in the village. I was only meant to be visiting for a few days, but would you believe it? The train stopped running. They fear spontaneous combustion or some such. It isn't clear whether they mean the trains or the passengers. <laughs> I think I'm doomed to live here forever. I feel the same. Well, you're the vicar. You're supposed to be here. They're godless heathens. They don't need a vicar. Shh. Someone here. Do you think I care? I've had enough of their primitive superstitions. Have you seen those hideous scarecrows everywhere? It's rather quaint, isn't it? A, a festival. Some of them are quite frightening. Quaint? Haven't you noticed? They turn up in strange places and their hollow eyes seem to follow you. Harmless fun, surely. Miss Gossok, are you saying that no one has told you yet about the procession, about the rites of Tatty Bogle? Should they have? You'll find out soon enough. Look, it's your turn at the till. Thanks. Here. Pop some ducky cat treats in for Tom, from me. Tell them I'll pop round later for a tea, a peppy and a chinwag. He's not very happy about this scarecrow infestation either. Look, who or what is this tatty bogle anyway? There was an instant silence. Everyone was looking at me. I suggest you bag your items and leave here quickly. I still feel like such an outsider. We both are. Another thing, Susie, just keep an eye on Mrs. Frimbley. She has a bad habit of getting subsumed by this kind of thing. 
Last time I saw her in the garden centre, she had a fervid look. Tom, what are you doing in my vegetable patch? Oh, blithering mollusk. Can't a fellow take a break? We've been busy building the tower, Mrs. Frimbley. It's claggy, thirsty work, you know. Fancy building needless things in heat like this. <laughs> Folly, I call it. The goblins do most of the mumble-crusting work. I mostly folder all. But, oh, when it's done, oh, what a fustilarian library it'll be. Like Alexandria, like Darlington. And standing so tall with a crinkum crankum staircase winding up and up and up to the star. I say, Mrs. Findlay, you haven't made any of your lemonade, have you? No. Ah, I could do with having something freshly squeezed. Yes, and I came out here to fetch some vegetables. Perhaps I could make you one of those modern smoothie things they all talk about. Dash me, crumpets, how wonderful. Wait, here. What the fuming knowledge are you doing? I was going to cut some cabbages. A fast, don't triggle draggle with the cabbages. They are my friends. Oh, stop messing about. Give me my knife back. They are not just any old goober mooching vegetables. Now you're really annoying me. Oh, these are the very kinshing morts, dear Mrs. Frimley, you bus eyed gorpus. You've cut Eric. You silly old fool. Alas, poor Eric. I knew him well. If you won't give him to me, it'll have to be some packet mix soup. Are you saying all this ragabrashing time that you've been cooking my friends and that I have been eating them? No, oh, I'm going back inside. Eric and all my friends. How can you ever forgive me? Oh. When I arrived back at Baker's End, I was startled to find Mrs. Frimley helping me unpack the shopping and actually confiding in me over her worries about Tom. I think the heat wave's got to him. He's worse than ever. And he does look sorry for himself, sitting in the vegetable patch, talking to his cabbage. It's attention-seeking, that's all it is. Did you get everything on my list? Ah, uh, yes, yes, I think so. You bought a new carrier bag. That's five pence down the drain. What's wrong with my basket on wheels? I... Don't like using it. Oh, I saw the vicar in the mini-mart. Oh, him? Useless article. He was telling me about how everyone's building scarecrows for some kind of procession. That's traditional. There's a huge one on the village green. A kind of joint effort. It isn't finished yet. Every 13th year, happenstance makes a bigger fuss about it. Outsiders never understand. Outsiders like me, I suppose. Oh, far be it from me to put a label on anyone. Well, I'm not exactly delighted to be stuck here myself. Oh, don't get yourself worked up. Sit down. I'll fetch you a nice drink. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Frimley. Oh, the heat's putting me on edge. Mm. You know... I don't even know your Christian name. Well, my given name is Vivienne. <laughs> no one calls me that now. It's like my name has shriveled up and dropped off through lack of use. Tom's really capering about out there now, up and down the vegetable patch. Sometimes I think he's completely out of his good. Him and his cat costume and all. And then I think, well, he's happy, isn't he? He's happy in himself. Where's the harm in that? I suppose. Here, why don't I mix us up some of this packet soup? And if we chill it a bit, we could pretend it's like uh, gazpacho, couldn't we? <laughs> that might be refreshing. Thanks, Vivian. Uh, Vivienne. Oh, you're welcome. It wasn't as if Vivienne Frimbley wasn't without her own peculiarities that summer. I was miffed because it seemed she was offloading her household duties onto me. Fetching groceries, hoovering and dusting, and she was gallivanting into the fields of swaying corn that surrounded the village. I'm afraid to say that eventually my curiosity got the better of me and I followed her. I was cross and also worried. She was wandering aimlessly, drifting along and singing tunelessly. I hoped that sound of distant thunder meant we'd have rain soon. If this heat could only break. 
I'd love to hear the sound of rain. Ah, oh, here you are. Little one, little one. Wake up now. It's only me. Who could she be talking to? I crouched down to watch. Don't cry. Don't take on so. But nothing was crying as far as I could tell. She lifted up a large, flat rock and was bringing something carefully out of the earth, almost reverentially. She clutched it to herself. It was a pale jumble of roots. They looked like tiny limbs. Come to Mama. It had a truly horrible face. Have you missed me? It's time to take you home. She put the. Baby thing over her shoulder. She had her back to me, but the thing turned its face round. It looked straight at me. <laughs> what? No, no, Susie. What are you doing out here? Uh, I. I I, I don't know. Are you following me? No. Yes, yes. I, 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 I was concerned about you. You didn't be concerned about me, Miss Goshawk. I was coming here to see someone special. Special? Who? What? Can't you see him? My baby, of course. Your, your baby? I think the heat has happened to your wits. Let me help. You no, 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 no! Don't come anywhere near me with that that thing. Thing? Oh no! What are you saying? You'll upset him. What is it? I, I, I thought it was a bit of old root. It, it, it looked like a twisted. He's mine. If I say he's my child, then you've got to believe me. I took you for a better person, Miss Goshawk. Good day. And with the hideous, wormy, hairy root baby still held in her arms, she marched into the sea of swaying corn stalks, leaving me there. Were all the people of happenstance mad now? I had to get back to the cottage. The clouds roved overhead, and it grew darker. Oh, please, just rain. Let it rain. I stumbled straight into a scarecrow. I thought it was grabbing for me. I turned and fled, and I realized I was hopelessly lost. Help! Help me, please! Hello. Hello! Is there somebody there? Anybody? I, I can hear you. Please, please! It, 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 it's not funny. I could gladly strangle Mrs. Frimley, leading me all the way out here. No, 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 no! Stop! Stop! Don't come any! Don't come any closer. Why? Zootekins, I found you all, my duckaboo boo boo. Tom, it's you. I, I don't think I've ever been so pleased to see anyone. What's the matter? You look like you've had a clacking awful time. I have. I got lost, and and there was all this laughter in the corn, and and then Mrs. Frimley had a baby. Mrs. Frimley had a baby. Got smoothlikins. Oh, it's a horrid thing. Under a rock, she she found it. She was. Talking to it, my juggins. It was like a corn dolly, or, or some kind of fetish thing, or or a, a baby scarecrow. Oh, our own dear fusty lugged housekeeper is up to her whiffle waffles in black magic. I fear. Oh. The bejiggering heat wave has broken. C can we go home? Yes, I don't think these fields are very frooming safe this time of the year. Something evil is lurking all Hagamaka. Bugger in happenstance. Tom, it's raining. At last. 
Oh, what a relief! Possible <laughs> coo 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 coo. Oh, it's wonderful! <laughs> it's warm! It's blood! We looked at each other through the thickening light. This was nothing like the cool relief of a natural cloudburst. Oh no, it was exactly as Tom had said. It was raining blood from the darkening heavens. We both had the stench of it in our noses. We, we both had it running and oily grew down our faces and bodies. What loathly, vilesome enchantery is this. Quick, Susie, we must golly butty home at once. I didn't need telling twice. He led the way with his unerring feline sense of direction. We pelted through torrents of fresh blood all the way back to Baker's End and we hoped safety. You sit there. Are you comfy? What can I fetch you? What do you need? Oh, I don't know. I've never looked after anyone like you before. I think I'll keep you in the scullery here, in my ingredients cupboard. Smells so lovely in there. Mm, baking spices. <gasps> a cake. Yes, I must bake a cake, mustn't I? It's traditional after all. You can sit on the counter and watch. Oh, look, it's raining at last. We haven't seen that in such a long time. Oh, come indoors, General Dog's body. You're soaked. Just look at you. Oh, now, look at this mess. Here, baby, now don't be scared. He's only a dog. Hello, Mrs. Trimbley. Are you rampaging about in here? Vivian! Are you here? You left me up here. I got lost. I'm in here with the dog. Quick, baby, you hide in here. Don't let them see you. It's raining murks and blood out there, blood, blood. Is it? You don't seem surprised. And there's blood on the kitchen cabinets. That's just from the dog. Oh, yes. It rains blood here. Of course it does. Every 13 years. You never saw it before. Off on your travels. Heavens to Betsy, I don't like it. But whose blood is it? Oh, no. It's in here, too. It will pass, and I'll mop up these few spatters. Don't worry. It nourishes the earth. It feeds the scarecrows. It will revive Tatty Bogle. Suddenly, Tom looked as if he'd just remembered something terribly important. Slap me vitals, my friends! What the devil is he doing now? Once more, he was mucking about in the vegetable patch. He was telling me not to touch them. Now, look what he's doing. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you. I promise I will save you all, my dearies. It was the most manic I'd ever seen him yet. The king of cats was dashing back and forth between cabbage patch and cottage. I can't leave them languishing out in the bloodstorm. Stop it, you silly man. All these vegetables. How will we ever eat so many? Fartleberries. Eat them, Mrs. Frimley. Eat them. He filled the entire kitchen with curly kale and leafy cauliflowers and all manner of root vegetables, too. All of them were dripping in blood. We won't be eating a frabjous one of you. They're the only friends I've got. I think he's really lost it this time. I looked askance at Mrs. Frimbley, thinking how earlier that day I had witnessed her getting up to funny business of her own. And Eric. Look, here's Eric. He's the most important of the pulchritudinous lot. He's your new best friend, I suppose, Eric the Cabbage. Ah, now, don't be skimble shambles, Mrs. Frimbley. I love you all in different, whiffling ways, but Eric just has that something extra special. Are you finished running in and out? I believe I've got every ninky pot snapper indoors, yes. Crackers, that's the only word for it. Fish stick, shut the door, my lovelies. Come on, let's get this bejiggering mess cleaned up. All that day was gloomy at Baker's End. The windows were streaked with gore. Blood drummed on the thatched roof. Mrs. Frimley returned to her kitchen and spent hours baking a cake using all the dried fruit and spices in her cupboards. The aromas were tantalising, but it was spoiled by the heavy atmosphere. Tom had retreated to his study. 
He said he was in conference with his so-called friends. He told me this with Eric's leafy head tucked under his arm. Don't sprag this around, Susie, but between you and me and our friends listening at home, these cabbages and things aren't vegetables at all. They're not? No. Why? Do you think I sit mimbling to mangolds all day, taking advice and so on? Well, what are they? Marjorie proves they're my goblins, of course, in disguise. Just in case. In case of what? In case something terrible happens. And Eric has the feeling that something scrum diddly umpishly awful is about to go on. I must go. After Tom locked himself away with his friends from the vegetable patch, the vicar came calling in a yellow sou'wester streaked with blood. Come in. You look awful. Can you believe it? There must be a, a scientific explanation. Iron in the water table or, or something, or, or pollution from the chemical plant. There's that power station along the coast. I can't even make you a cup of tea. There's blood coming out of all the taps. Christ. It was bad enough when it was dragons outside the supermarket and that spooky marionette show that rolled into town. But this is something else. Here, uh, Brandy. Something smells delicious. What is that? I haven't eaten for ages. Oh, Reverend Ailing, how lovely to see you. Mrs. Frimley. Please, we're all friends here. <laughs> Call me Vivienne. All right. Why is she being so pleasant all of a sudden? I don't like it. What's that? It's rude to whisper. He was just saying, what a lovely dress. Oh, I wasn't sure. I thought it was maybe too bold for my complexion. <laughs> Jolly colourful. Well, it's nice to dress up, isn't it? What with the procession and everything. <laughs> procession? Tonight? Oh, dear. For the spiritual leader of our community, you sometimes seem to know so little about us. <laughs> Where does this procession go to, exactly? Oh, just around and all about happenstance. And then we gather on the green at sundown, just like folk have done since time immemorial. It's a lovely spectacle. But it's raining blood out there, woman. Can't you see? It's all for Tatty Bogle. Oh, your ghastly scarecrow effigy. Yes, I saw him. All finished. Hideous, wretched-looking thing. Oh, you mustn't say that. He's the most beautiful man in all creation. I went to the front window and peered through the murk. And sure enough, there he was on the village green. Tall as the village Christmas tree, twisted and twiggy and hideous with a hollowed-out gourd for a head. And all of it was dripping with freshly fallen blood. I suppose you'll all be dancing round like a horde of pagan ruffians again. Dancing, yes. And I will be joined with him in unholy matrimony. What? Vivian! What do you mean? I'm baking my own celebratory cake. I will fill my handbag and pockets with warm crumbs. And when the hour is nigh, I will sally forth to lead the procession. I don't like the sound of this at all. And with the whole of happenstance as my witness, I will be the bride of Tatty Bogle. My friends and I have been listening to every nimble figging word you've been saying. And I must tell you that we absolutely forbid such ninty narky goings on. Now you'll stop me, will you? <laughs> With every ferocious fibre of my being, meow. Well, tough titty, Tom Baker. I know my destiny. And I'll be wrapped in the arms of the scarecrow god tonight. Uh, Vivienne, you do know, don't you, that what you're saying isn't normal. She's always been galumphing mad. She was mad as a hat stand on the day I first met her. I let her gobbermooch here and become my housekeeper. And how does she repay me, eh? Maybe I should nip back to the vicarage and leave you to your evening. Took me in, he says. All these years of loyal service I've given. All the best years of my pitiful life. Foisty flannels, mouldy pie, skinny malinky. I think all this talk of pagan rituals has put us all a bit on edge. Mrs. Frimbley, if you're not happy here at Baker's End... 
then you only have to bang up the elephant's trunk. Since when did my happiness ever come into it? But I'm the king of the cats, Mrs. Frimbley, and where I go is where it's at. I dance and strut and flail about and rules or fools I'll gladly flout, and all my friends, both nice and nasty... I'll bake them all inside a pasty. Plus, I hate your rotten poetry. Ah! It's nonsensical. In fact, I've been fed up to the eye teeth with you ever since you started running around in that mucky old cat outfit. Uh, don't say anything you'll regret, Vivian. I thought things were bad enough before, but lately, cats and cabbages and kings, book towers. You're not the king of cats. You're not the king of anything. Frimbley, I think you'd better go. Oh, no, no. Mrs. Frimbley, don't. Tom, you don't mean it. Yes, I do. Oh, Tom, tell her you care. Tell her you can't cope without her. He's sulking. I've left the rest of my cake on the side. You can have it for your supper. Don't want it. Throwing an old woman out on the street. And her with a new baby. With a what? Oh, you haven't met him, have you, Reverend? Oh, isn't he lovely? <laughs> I know you won't approve. Oh, shh, Reverend, he's perfect, aren't you? Is he trying to say something? We are all going to die. <laughs> Get that fumble-crusting homunculus out of my home. She's as mad as a wet hen. Says the man in the furry suit and the battered crown. Ah! I don't like all this bad feeling. I will bid you all goodbye. <sighs> Who could that be? I couldn't care less, Susie. Yes? Oh, my. I was right behind the housekeeper as she answered the door. It looked like the whole village was on our front path. They were all over the front garden and the road outside. They were staring at Baker's End. And they were waiting for Mrs. Frimley. The landlord from the duck and stool spoke for them all. We have come for you at the appointed time. You must take your place at the head of the procession as the Queen of Happenstance. I understand. I am ready. Tom! Tom, we can't just let her go! She's a grown gilly gorpus. In fact, she's an old woman. She can do what she wants. I'm galloping off to my study, and if anybody wants me, I'll be talking to my goblins. Reverend Ailing went back to his empty church, and I was left alone at Baker's End. Mrs Frimley's cake stood in the scullery, looking lonely. She had clawed out great handfuls, and she'd also left a note taped to the fridge. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Help me. So I raced to the study. Tom, we have to help her. Tom, Tom, do you hear me? She needs us. Yes, I know that. She left a message. I'm wiffle waffling with me goblin chums. We're wondering what to do. So you aren't sulking? Sulk? When do I ever sulk? Look, Susie. She's in a gilly ghastly danger. I thought it was just some quaint ninny knocking festival, but the true picture is much more gimbly. We dashed outside into the pouring blood. Funny by gaslight, they're almost ready. Look! The whole village must be out. Yes, almost every one of us. <gasps> Reverend Ailing, you gave me shock. Susie, hold on to your watsits. What's the matter with the vicar? They bragger nappered the beggar completely, I'm a fangled. I always suspected he had a lily-coloured liver. The folk of happenstance have waited a long time for this night. Sundown approaches. It's the magic hour, is it, fusty lugs? It's the appointed time for your unhygienic hijinks, eh? What if we went over there and told Mrs. Frimley to have nothing more to do with it? What if we put a stop to all this nonsense? My jugging, she has a point. If you interfere, they will kill you. Tell me, Reverend, are all the villagers armed with kitchen slices and garden rakes and hefty axes and just about anything pointy they can lay their sweaty hands on? Oh, yes. Ah, well, just remember, Reverend, my temper is explosious and I tend to be ferocious. 
I pound some rats and gnats and fleas in spats till your flies up. Or I am the king of the cats, you see. Enough of your nonsensical verse. You will come with me at once. There's nothing so dreary as a humorless old deary like you, Reverend Ailing. I think I'll start wailing. Oh, wail and wail and wallow and wail. Oh, lament and torment and forment and forment. Tribulations and trials. Oh, wail and wail and wail again. This is the worst harvest festival for miles and miles. Both Tom and I were putting a brave face on it as the villagers assembled in their homemade carnival rags and sang their dirge. Reverend Haley, you can't be a party to this. But I can, Susie. Don't you see? At last I feel like I truly belong in this place. You're a mumble-crumping bunch of wagworts and runny bums. <laughs> it's a long night. We might burn you too as well. No! You ballyhoos and ratbags can't burn the king of cats. Oh, we can. All to do honor to our master. Behold, Tatty Bogle. My God, it was horrible. They had spent a week building that monstrosity with his jagged grin set in a broken gourd. His eyes were sharp with eldritch life, and his limbs were crooked and thorny. Gadzooks, what a vile tatterdemalion. Bring forth the intended... Mrs. Frimley, you're in the dizzy age, woman. Stir your stumps. Wake up, Vivienne. She's spellbound. She's in a mortal hate. Dizzy as a doxy. You don't have to go through with this. What? What's happening to me? She's got a baby thing with her tongue. What are we going to do? I'll tweedle the our safety just like always. You'll see, Susie. Well, you better hurry up. They've got her on the podium now. Friends, my people, we are gathered here today under the wise and watchful eye of Tatty Bogle in order to commit this wicked, wanton old housekeeper to his eternal care. No! No, you can't! I have... I have a child with me, my baby. Would you send this poor innocent to me to save the baby? It is the child of the Scarecrow King, Mrs. Vivian Frimley, has secretly born his child. Ichabod, they're all going mentholated spirits. No, you should set us both free. We haven't done anything. Perhaps we ought to ask the child of Tatty Bogle itself how we ought to proceed. out of time. Yes, yes, I'm thinking. Everyone, look at me. Look, look. I am the king of the... Ignore him. Let's set fire to his own help. No! No! And I, I thought, I, I thought that I, I could stop them. You idiots! You think you can sacrifice me? You've done exactly what I wanted. I am Vivienne Frimley, and I'll make you all regret this. I will come back. I will make your lives hell. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
The crowd was too much for us. They were armed to the teeth and drenched in blood. Of course, we failed to save her. Tom took it very badly. I thought it would work out. I thought the goblins would come, but they've let me down. Back to the cottage, Tom. While the villagers are distracted, we don't want them turning their attention to us. My fractilious faith in goblin kind is gone. Forever. That night, very late, when all the noise of the green had subsided, the rain of blood petered to a stop. I went to my bedroom window and looked out at the abandoned wreckage of the pyre. It was just a smouldering heap by now. Great Caesar's ghost, how could you? Hoofdoodles and hoydens! I'll never, never trust you yahoos again. I'll never listen to a frog-slacking word you say. He was out of his mind with fury. Who was he shouting at? Himself? And I heard the buzzing and whirring. Every single blender and food mixer he had in the place. He was chopping up his vegetables in the dead of night and reducing them to soup. That's what you muck sprouts deserve, goblins. <laughs> Gad spodrickens. I'm going to reduce you all to pale green puke. <laughs> what could I do? He went tearing off down the garden. I had to go after him in case he did himself a mischief. It was cooler tonight. The atmosphere had broken, the heat had abated, and blood was no longer falling out of the sky. Wail and wail, torment and fail. I shan't shimble shamble too nimbly, upset as I am about Mrs. Frimbley. But now I know what I must do. The King of Cats still has a plan or two. Eric, Eric, only you, the rest were no good, and now they're stewed. Eric, alas, Eric, poor old you. I crept after him down the garden and into the rising mist. I didn't make myself known to him as we entered the shrouded woods. He darted too far ahead in his cat pyjamas and his golden crown, clutching in both hands the last remaining goblin cabbage. I snolly gusted you, Eric. I trusted you and all your chums. He often went to the book tower for solitude, but not tonight. He pelted through the woods, which were darker and nastier than I'd ever seen them. Our journey seemed to take ages, but at last we came to a lake. It was huge and silver in the moonlight. It looked cool and inviting. After 24 hours of bloody rain, all I wanted to do was jump into that water. But then... Ah, you're here. I hoped it would be. There was a wooden boat by a dock. Tom was talking with a boatman. A cowled, skeletal figure, smoking a cigarette, unhurried. His empty eye socket stared back at the King of Cats. Yes, I know it's the kind of journey I can't make many times. I might be losing one of my splendid cat lives. Oh, yeah. They were deep in conference. Thank you, Boatman. Here's sixpence. It's very frumptious of you. Bossy McCoo. Oh, rain at last. I woke up to find myself back in bed and wondering whether I'd dreamed that strange encounter by the lake. In the morning, it was raining still, and the cottage gutters ran with bubbling rainwater, sluicing all the blood away and the soot from the village green. The villagers seemed pleased with themselves, but they were subdued and sheepish as they slowly came to their senses. The vicar called round, ashen-faced. I'd been hoping it wasn't for real. I'm afraid not. I hope you realise that I wasn't in my correct mind. I know. Are you going to contact the police? Well, of course I am. What do you expect? The local lot are no good. They were part of it. What, what will you say? I'll tell them what happened. I'll, I'll tell them what became of Mrs Frimley. This place... I thought it was bad enough before, but I thought the people were just eccentric, essentially harmless. What made you do it, Reverend? What was it took over your mind last night? I can't describe it. Not now. Was it 
Tatty Bogle? It was a presence, one that I've felt before. Susie, are you ready? Oh, it's you, old cockadoodle ailing. Tom, you know I was possessed last night, don't you? What? Possessed? Is there really such a thing as actual possession, though? Eh? Aren't we merely talking about the mafficking unconscious? Really? Eh? Aren't we talking about releasing uh, our deepest, darkest doppelganger selves? Isn't possession just nine-tenths of wishful, wanton thinking, eh? Woof, woof! No, cuckoo! No, cuckoo, no, no, cuckoo, no, no, cuckoo, no, no, I was cuckoo, taken cuckoo. over! What did you say? I would never be a party to such goings-on. What's done is done. You've ragabrashed Mrs. Frimbley into cinders. She foresaw this ending, you know, back at Gobblenull Hall. So now it's incumbent upon Susie and me to go and rescue the snivy old besom. Rescue her? Well, where from? I, I mean, well, how can we? we she... Hades, Susie, Hades! Tatty Bogle reached out and dragged her into Hades! And we have to follow her there and bring her back home. Really, Tom, that's preposterous. Exactly what I'd expect you to say. Susie, we can't carry weapons or anything bog whippet and gnarly. There's no room for luggage on the ferryman's boat, only me and you and Eric. Are you serious? As serious as Cuddles, the sinister-looking clown, eating the very last packet of chocolate digestives in a post-apocalyptic wilderness. Hades! Hades! Hades? Yes, Hades and gentlemen! We are preparing for a descent into hell, and we are going to driggle-draggle Mrs. Frimbley home with us. This is holding out false hope, surely. Oh, fartle berries to you, you pious old pump cushion. You were the one egging on the hoi polloi last night. It was all your fault, Vicar. I find you guilty. Pass me black cap and prepare the rope. I would do anything to make amends. We don't need you, you brog nozzler. Susie and I can manage by ourselves, but we may be gone for some time. Back through the woods, through the drizzle and the dreary light of day, the ferryman and his boat were still there. He helped us aboard. By daylight, he was hunched deeper inside his sepulchral robes. His cigarette smoke emerged from his hood in great clouds as he spoke. Just you two, is it? You've been wanting a round trip, yeah? We hope so. We hope to have a third with us when we itchy back. It'll cost you more. Money is no object to the king of cats. I never said anything about money, did I? Then we were sailing into the chill mist. I thought about Reverend Ailing's reaction when Tom announced our destination. I wondered why I hadn't been more surprised to learn this startling plan. Before we left, the vicar took me aside. This is madness, Susie. It's all made up. Isn't hell and heaven and all that jazz the kind of thing you ought to believe in? Like, professionally? Not necessarily. Not these days. Some of us are very modern. Tom's leading you on a fool's errand. But somehow, I didn't think so. As the mist swallowed us up and the boat sailed deeper and further than it should have been able to if this were actually just a lake in the middle of the woods, I understood we were journeying into real magic. We were actually passing into another world. These are the Shadowlands, Susie. Is your friend or a relative you're going to be visiting? A friend. That's nice. I'll be glad to see you, I'm sure. I hope so. Nice time of year for a visit. Not too hot down there. I've got family who worked there, what? Must be 20 years ago. I keep meaning to visit properly. They say the standard of living is much better. It's good life, they say, down among the damned. Yes, I've bubbled about in Hades once or twice. Meow. It's the way of cats, you see. You're a cat, are you, sir? Why, yes, meow, delectably and nimbly, I shall rescue Mrs. Frimbley. I'm the king of the cats, you see. And Hades really means nothing to me, do you hear me? No thing. I get my kicks on the river stick. Boom, boom. Most laudable, sir. Good housekeepers are all to come by. I've been through several dozen. Are you a housekeeper, ma'am? <laughs> Just a friend. Tom and I were once in a TV show together. Oh, that was a long time ago and in another Galinky country. And besides, I wasn't even a cat then. I say, Ferryman, could you uh, hurry this thing up a bit? Patience, sir. Do we know how time moves down here? How much time will have passed for Mrs. Frimley? You enjoy better physical speculation, do you? 
how are we ever going to find her anyway? How big are the Shadowlands? We follow our noses, Susie. We uh, galumph our way in. Is there a map of Hades? Is there somewhere all the new people go, waiting to be housed? Do they even live in houses anyway? Aren't they supposed to be burning forever and eternal torment? It's not like that, really. Not the bits I've seen. It all looked rather like Middlesbrough. I'm enjoying listening to you two. Mostly my passengers just sit there shitting themselves. Well, it's a question of attitude, isn't it? I like being open to new experiences. Soon, I could make out the hulking shapes of the buildings through the mist. We were approaching grand, crumbling palaces. After what Tom had said, I was expecting warehouses and cranes and urban decay. But this was quite different. We were approaching a city of faded grandeur. Tall buildings rose out of the murky waters, faded and pale, but still very elegant. We sailed quietly into a waterlogged city under the arch bridges, and I felt sure, sure we were being watched by figures at those shuttered windows. It looks more like Venice this time. Water's rather nasty. Don't put any part of yourself in the water, Susie, just in case. Tell me, why have you brought a cabbage with you into Hades? Shh. He's a goblin in disguise. He only looks like a vegetable. This is Eric. Eric, meet Sharon, the famous ferryman. Look, Gov, I know my onions. That's a cabbage. Don't listen to the frumptious wangler, Eric. I'll take my hat off to you, young lady, knocking about with the old cat king here and his cabbage. Must be a bit of a fumble crusting jabber mooch. We manage perfectly well, thank you. Ah, don't mind me, love. Just having a bit of banter, ain't I? It's only banter, no hurt feelings, eh? Nothing wrong with banter, is there? Oh, here we are. All ashore, who's going ashore? Welcome, all three of you, to hell. I'll keep the meter running, shall I? Now, is there anywhere in particular you'd like to go? Yes, we'd like directions to the Fruminous Palace of the Mistress of Hell, please. Not too far away, at that very moment, the Mistress of Hell was anticipating our arrival. All this dawdling. They're taking too long. Are they always like this? I'm amazed they've even come this far, all the way to Hades, just for me, just to save my soul. Don't get your hopes up, love. And don't flatter yourself either. I'm sure they haven't come to rescue you from my clutches just because they're fond of you. Yes, why would they want anything more to do with me? All I've done is cause endless bother at Baker's End for months. My dalliance with that sinister presence, for example. That didn't end well. And then getting myself embroiled in the ghostly vigil at Gobble Knoll Hall just because I had a thing about their psychic medium. And worst of all, getting myself sacrificed at the Harvest Festival. It's a wonder they aren't I'm glad to see the back of me. Stop going on, woman, and get back in your cage and take that hideous baby with you. Let the raiments of hellish obscurity drop over your rattled body. Let them hide you away in the dimmest reaches of my filthy realm. I'm terribly busy, and I don't want to listen to some selfish old woman airing her woes. I want to see some proper evil folk. What time is it? There's an orgy of the damned at five. I said I'd show my face. What's going on? Who dares cause a kerfuffle at the entrance to my inner sanctum? I do. Oh, mistress of hell, it's me, Tom Baker, with my assistant Susie Goshawk and uh, Eric, the cabbage. It was an extremely grand ballroom, gilded and decadent, and filled with scarecrows in their finery. Scarecrows rustling and waltzing about the marble floor, dressed in ragged styles from every historical era. When we entered the room and Tom called out greetings, they all drew to a halt and stared at us with dark, unfriendly eyes. Thank Fanny Crodick for that. The music was terrible. Uh, this is what we call a custody situation, Susie. Why custody? Because that's how you feel when you get just desserts. <laughs> boom, boom. Oh. oh, is that the Queen of Hell? In the gown, a mask? Come forward, Tom Baker and friends. 
The mistress of hell commands it. As we approached, it was apparent that she was extremely vampish. One of those dominatrixes, I'd say. Hello there. Oh, thank you, your majesty. We have froomed a very great distance to be with you this evening. Oh. What do you know of frooming? Ha! And at last, we have frostled ourselves here in the 27th circle of hell, Malabol. Thank you. In order to beseechify and beggar you, O oh, mistress of Hades. Oh, ah, bliss. We fling ourselves at your delicious feet in abject terror and... Aren't you laying it on a bit thick, Tom? Oh, dear, no, Susie. Those miggle boffing minor deities, they just love to be buttered up like this. Uh, though... Maybe she could stop whipping me for just a moment. You have come here seeking to bargain with me, I suppose. Why, yes. Uh, how how did you snolly that? I've seen your sort before. Sort? I don't have a sort. I'm Frankum Finkum unique, I am. Mm, you're certainly unusual. Oh. I might even keep you as a pet. <laughs> you could be my companion as I rule over the underworld. Over the underworld? Under the overworld? I don't think I'd like being whipped all day. <laughs> You'll do as I tell you. Uh, possibly, or anti nicanackily you could just hand over my poor frazzled housekeeper and we could tiptoe out of your opulent pleasure palace and leave as quick as our tired feet could carry us. Yes, it'd be like we'd never been. You presume to bargain and risk my displeasure just for the sake of this skanky old damsel. All gave a gasp of horror as a tatty old curtain flew up and behind it stood revealed an old rusted cage and Mrs. Frimley stuck inside. Oh, hello, Tom. Susie. There you are, Mrs. Frimley. How frilliful to see you again. You're alive, Vivian. I can't believe it. I can hardly believe it myself. <laughs> when I close my eyes, all I can see are the flames rising higher. All oh, my memories of Earth are terrible ones. Life on Earth is all an illusion. This is the real world, and you will forget everything that came before. And I'm going to keep the lot of you here forever with me. And I'm going to do terrible, ghastly things to you all. I'll make you squeal. I'll make you shriek. Aha, uh -huh. well, my niffy-naffing mistress of the underworld, I wouldn't count on that. For though you might be queen of hell, I can trounce and pounce and France as well in hell. You can take your Hades and stick it where the sun don't shine. For I am the king of the cats, you see. The magnificent king of cats. The wonderful, bounciful, fanciful, terrible king of fabulous cats. And you can't make me or any of my lovely friends do anything we don't want. Oh, no, indeed not. Queenie, 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 queenie. <laughs> Tom's bellicose caterwauling didn't cut any ice with the Queen of Hell. Oh, and woe, and woe again. And before any of us could even think, we were being dragged off by the Tatterdemalians. It was a torture chamber in one of the lower rooms of the palace. Through the windows, we could see the river outside. And by now, it was looking more like Middlesbrough than Venice. They're going to torture us to death. Again. I've already had it done twice. Oh, no. Horrid, is it? Scarecrows came lurching in to watch us suffer as we were lashed into place. Then the Mistress of Hell came gliding in, looking very pleased with herself. And she watched us being stretched on the racks. <laughs> and then we were tickled and prodded by unspeakable, inanimate objects. <laughs> Oh, it does my wicked heart good to hear such heartfelt howls. Keep going, lovies. Scream your heads off. No, we won't submit to this ghastly torture. Looks like you already have, dearie. Any minute now, I'm going to jump off this torture table thing and I'll be galumphing home with my friends in tow. Oh, yes. Torturer! Do more torturing to this one. He's being annoyed. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, leave 
him alone, you awful woman. He's enjoying it. I'm going to take Mrs. Frimley home. She wasn't supposed to die and descend into hell like this. She doesn't belong here. Oh, nice of you to say so, Tom. What will you offer me in return for this person? Ow, that stings! Mistress of all hell, stinky denizens, I'm offering you in place of Mrs. Vivian Frimley, the head of your most grimly fiendish enemy. Now, don't ask me how he did this, but next thing, Tom is sitting up and shrugging off his chains and manacles, easy as you please, and he's holding up his cabbage for all to see. This is Eric. He's the king of the goblins. He's at your absolutely mercy. Can I be sure that it is he? Cookie with us, of course it is. And with Eric in your grasp, you will be able to control all the ginky malinky goblins in the world. Something no deity has ever been able to do, Mia. Uh, Tom, can I have a word? Shh, 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 Eric, not now. But you don't understand. Look, Eric, you've had your chance. I've had your jibber-jabber in my crinkum-crankum for months. Just shut up! If I could control all the goblins in creation, that would make me very powerful indeed. God, Spudrickens. Of course it would. I think you snagged her interest. But, Tom, does she seem a bit familiar to you? The Mistress of Hell has decided. Hand me the Goblin King, and I will release Mrs. Frimley and the other woman. Only if you stop whipping me. Sorry, force of habit. Ah, oh, oh, it's, it's all right. I've got you, Vivian. Oh, thank you. Oh, for coming all this way. But am I really alive, Susie? Am I just a, a ghost or something now? I... I don't know. Give me the Goblin King! I tried to warn you, Tom, on your head, please. Oh, enough of your ninty nanty, Eric. Here, Queenie, catch! I've got him! I've got him! I'm gotting him! <laughs> you certainly have, Mistress. Now you have absolute power over every eldritch goblin and ghoul in creation! Oh, mine! Do you know, Susie, you're quite right. She is a bit familiar. I wonder if I've miscalculated a bit. Oh, yes. We've met before. And yes, Tom Baker, you've made a hideous mistake. Oh, no. She's going to reveal herself to be someone else. Someone even worse, isn't she? Through many millennia, I have worn a great many faces. And you and I have encountered again and again in various forms. We are eternal, you and I. She's taken her mask off. It's not a mask. It's her actual face she's taking off. It's crumbling like, like a, a sponge cake or something. What? Cakey face? I don't look. And the person you have known me as most recently. Do you want to see her true face? Look! I am Marcella Doody! Marcella? From TV's famous Manifest Yourself. What are you doing here? Bossy, my girl. You'd better run, Tom. You'd better run. All of you, get running before I change my mind. I could change it back in a flash. I decide to keep you in Hades with me. But I don't understand. Why are you here? She's out of her mind. All that dabbling in dark forces, she's gone funny. Flee! All of you, flee this terrible place. I don't think she's fully brushing about. Before I set my scarecrows on you, fly, my pretties. She's gone fudge-knocking bananas. Come, Eric. Let us make wicked plans together. Command your goblin hordes to do my bidding. I think we'd best leave her to it. Destroy the book tower. Burn down Baker's End. Incinerate Tom Baker's magic library. What? Destroy it all. Oh, Noel Gordon, are you insane, woman? Such magical knowledge. I can't let it continue to exist on the earth. It isn't for the likes of you. Only for me. Run, Mrs. Frimley, Susie. We've got to get back to Baker's End before this bad, bad hang. It was a nightmarish journey back through the city streets. First, we had to fight our way through crowds of giggling scarecrows. 
Mrs. Fremley was quite stiff and slow, owing to her recent travails. We staggered into the streets where more dreadful zombie-like people were lurching around under a sky that had turned the color of varicose veins. <laughs> Why has she turned evil? Why does she want to burn your book tower? I believe it's our old friend, the sinister presence behind all this, Susie. You two go on without me. I'm only holding you up. Nanny, nanny, never, you ungrateful woman. We came all this way just for you. We'll carry you if we have to. Like Orpheus, I came down into hell in search of you, Mrs. Frimbley. And now we must keep on tracking and never looking backing or we'll be stuck in Middlesbrough forever. All right. Well, enough of the classical illusions, and let's get Killy Gorpus going. The boatman was waiting for us, cheerful as ever. Three for the return trip, is it? She'll cost you extra, skinny as she is. Let us aboard. The Queen of Hell is plotting unspeakable things. A warning you now. Traffic's rotten. We might have to take a detour around purgatory. Just get punting, man. The boating trip seemed to go rather more quickly on the way back. I'm the king of the cats. I'm the prince of bizarre malarkey. But I've got such an awful feeling I've made a dreadful ninky-narky. Oh, woe and wail and wail and wail and go meow. Lament and loss. Oh, bugger. Can she really do it, Tom? Hmm? Can she harm your library, your books? She's powerful. And with those goblin things in her pocket... I think she could do anything. The sinister presence has gained the upper hand. We must prepare for the snolly gusting worst, my dear. I couldn't bear it if we lost Baker's End. Sounds like you've had a heck of a time. Still, at least you got your housekeeper back. And her baby. A what? Oh, yes. I couldn't let anything happen to him. He's just a harmless baby. That hideous homunculus. Shush! You hurt his feelings. Oh, no. Can you hear that? This doesn't look good. Oh, my barber can't. Look. They've done it. Just as she commanded, the goblins have set fire to Baker's End. All ashore. We arrived back in the woods. The air was thick with soot and smoke. We could see, lit up in the hellish night, the book tower wreathed in golden flames. Stolen gravestones were glowing and molten. I won't allow it. I deny this reality. This can't be happening. Tom, it's too late. We must get away. The king of cats won't allow this to happen. We clambered ashore after him. The heat was intense. It knocked us back. The ferryman stood there sadly. He watched us. I can't let them do this. I won't let them ruin everything. No, Tom. No, 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 don't. No, you can't. How could we hold him back? We'd been to hell and back that night. How could we ever hold back the king of cats? He leapt out of our grasp and he raced straight into the heart of the inferno. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program.